All right, all right, all right. It is Sunday, 7 p.m., that magic number. And I cannot believe that I am here saying that I am bringing to you guys the seventh episode of our series. Time is definitely flying, it's moving so fast. I think there was a point that I actually even said uh, the wrong episode number. But anyway, thanks to all of my amazing viewers that have been along this journey, staying in touch, staying on top of the subject and being a part of the conversation. Welcome to all of you as you join our live today's conversation. I am extremely, extremely excited about who we're talking to in a a subject that is extremely compassionate to me. Today, we're talking about business, how you can build a business for yourself while still balancing a corporate role. Hi, guys. You know who I am. I am Sharonda McDaniel, your host, where each week I bring to you material on things that you can do to bring success to your life, to help you go out, obtain your goals, and have the things that you desire. We're talking about common topics and common conversations where we seem to lack, where we are seeking and hoping to close the gap. We all know that closing the gap does not happen overnight. But it does happen as we have the conversation and start to make small changes. And tonight we're talking about small business and business ownership because it is something that many of us neglect and we just don't know how important it is for us, for our health, for our mindset, and most importantly, for our financial freedom. Tonight I have an amazing guest, someone that I definitely look up to and am inspired by each And every single day, she is a serial entrepreneur. I definitely do through creative in there. She has a brilliant mind. The things that she produces and what comes out of her, you know that they are God sent and a success builder. She is Shanina McGregor, who is someone who's doing a phenomenal job of building her brand, her business for herself, while also performing and doing an amazing job in corporate America as well. And tonight, we get to pick her brain on how we do it all. All right. Hey, Shanina, how are you? And welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, I'm really excited to have you here. And thank you so much for taking on the invite to join us on today's show. You might be frozen. Yep, it froze you. As Shanina gets this hot spot, Xfinity, it's failing her today. <laughs> As she gets that together, I am really compassionate about it. I right, dare we go. Hey, Shanina. Am I there? Yep, you are here. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you. Yes. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right. Hey, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for accepting the invitation. You're welcome. Listen, I want to jump right in. I may have a suggestion on something you can do in case your internet is still acting crazy. Um, A good suggestion would be, though I did not want you to join from your cell phone, maybe connecting from your cell phone as opposed to your laptop. Maybe that'll be a solution for you. Okay, I can definitely try that. Okay, you can try that and then just turn your phone landscape or if you have to stand it straight up and down, we will make it work because you definitely got some nuggets that I want these people to hear all about, okay? Okay, I just can't tell them how to work their internet, huh? (laughs) (laughs) It's okay. You know what? When technology fails, we definitely have a solution to try to fix that. We work together. We are all human. You can tell them how to work the internet. Don't change uh, service providers. There we go. <laughs> okay, guys, while Shanina adjusts and she switches from her uh, laptop to her phone, um, again, I really appreciate you guys all being there. And small business ownership has been something that has been extremely, extremely um, something that's been a passion for me as I've, I've understood and grown so much to understand that building financial wealth and financial freedom isn't simply associated with just getting a good job and making um, some great income. 
I am going to do this and mute. And there we go. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. This is my cell phone. So hopefully that's it is working. it is working. I see you very clearly. I hear you loud and clear. And you're not froze. So hey, oh. Shanina. Hey. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome to today's call. You know, firstly, of course, I want to tell you thank you for accepting the invitation, being willing to tell your story and, and join the conversation on today. Okay, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, let's go ahead and have patience. Yes, and thank everyone for their patience. I don't think they're going anywhere. Y'all are all forgiving people, right? Let Shanina know it is okay. We're all human. But Shanina, I want to go ahead and jump right in, right? I've introduced you, but I haven't gave them the business on Shanina. So Shanina, let's start out with you telling us about you. Who is Shanina? You know, you obviously are a business owner, and this is why you're here and you're in corporate. So give us some give us some background. What's the word about Shanina? Okay, well. I would say, uh, first and foremost, I would like to blast it for everyone. I am a God-fearing person. Um, I am God-led. And so um, as far as entrepreneurship, I've always had a uh, leadership spirit, uh, whether it was when I was tiny amongst all my cousins or, you know, when I became a big sister, you know, just having to take on some responsibility um, that, either my mom, my grandmother, or my tribe that was around me allowed me um, opportunities to express myself and to show that leadership. So I would say that I've always been a leader um, in some capacity. Um, and honestly, I wouldn't say that it was just something that I just wanted to do, but it has always been in me. So I'm staying true to myself um, as far as being um a leader and entrepreneur. So as far as the business um, side, I would say maybe 20 years ago, <laughs> I'm telling my age a little bit, so right out, <laughs> right out of college, uh, one of my good girlfriends were getting married. Um, I had always done little small events. Um, even I go back to childhood with you know, going to the candy store with your cousins and you having a little party and you're decorating maybe with sheets and pillows. And <laughs> so I've, I've always had um, entertainment has always been my thing and, you know, socializing and things like that. So um, she was getting married and I asked, you know, I'm interested in wedding and event planning. Can I just, you know, do the wedding for you? And she allowed me that opportunity. And that's what really sparked you know, event planning and, and wanted to um, really explore that. And so after that, I've done quite a few weddings and little things um, on the side as far as event planning. And I'm like, you know what? This is what I'm really passionate about. This is what I enjoy. And so I took that spark and made it a business. So I've been in business um, low key, I would say, for a good about five years. But I've really, really been pushing myself to as the title kind of said, use this to kind of prepare myself out of corporate. So really taking it seriously as far as the event planning. And then I also own a second business. I don't know if you want to jump into that right now. You can tell me all about all of these businesses, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I also have a second business and we're actually having our second year anniversary coming up this week. So I'm very proud of that. I am co-owner of Wood on the Whim which is a creative studio right here on the west side of Chicago, 5243 West North Avenue. Um, again, I am co-owner with my cousin and partner, Latanya Powell. And so uh, basically what we are is a creative studio where people come and um, they paint DIY wood signs as well as have um, an event space that people could come and have small mm -hmm. intimate as well. Our wonderful host, she hosted her birthday party there once. <laughs> so thank you, uh, Sharonda, for your support and always uh, supporting us. So yeah, we're on our second year anniversary um, and we're really doing great, um, bringing positivity and uh, really shining the light on women-based businesses as well as Black businesses and trying to operate in excellence um, for everyone to see and shine a light on we can do this and we can have fun right here on the west side of Chicago. Awesome. That is amazing. So I do want to ask you, you don't have to tell us what company you work for because 
this topic and what we're talking about is how you can be a boss. You can you can manage a business, be successful and still work for corporate. What is your corporate title? What do you do, you know, for the full time living for the time being? <laughs> so I am a senior marketing manager. Um and what I do is new client acquisition. It is uh, print marketing. So basically what I do short term, I place ads <laughs> for products in um, different publications um, and actually in Canada. So there is a U.S. division as well as a Canadian division. And I work on the Canadian division. All right. Let's go. And how long have you been with the company? 12 years. Okay. And before was with coca-cola for about five years so okay okay and you were marketing in uh at coca-cola as well right in a a, a lower position but uh yeah definitely a marketing position okay okay cool um you know i don't bring up your your corporate role shanina to to outshine your business but one of the reasons why i wanted to have you here is i know that being your own business owner isn't easy um and and being you know working in corporate and doing a great job but that isn't always as easy as it seems but i wanted to have someone on who was doing both and, and doing a great job at it who can be that example like you said i'm a black woman you know i'm a black business owner you're all of these things checking off the check the check marks and not only do you have one business but you have two right you've kind of told us a little bit about how and why you made the decision to go into business for yourself. You've always been a leader and event planning has been a part of you. So what then brought on wood on the whim? What so, brought on business number two? <laughs> it's really an extension of the event planning. So um, as a lot of people are definitely um, familiar with sipping paints, uh, where people paint on canvas, um, and go with their BYOB or wine or, you know, and have a good time with a small group or amongst other people that are um, in the class. So Latanya and I, which is my business partner, again, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, she is also our, my cousin and we both like to entertain. Um, and we were sitting around just thinking about business um, ideas and she is... <laughs> in her own right, a boss. So mm -hmm. she is a carpenter. I know that you know her, but I'm gonna give her a little shout out and what she does. Um, she's a carpenter by trade and she does woodworking and she's very, very well skilled in what she does. And um, so that is her passion. And of course, again, event planning is my passion. And so we kind of merged those two together. Um, again, like I said, two years ago, we did our first party. We said, well, what can we do to kind of merge these things together? Um, we definitely wanted a place where people can gather with their family and be in a safe environment and have a little fun. Now. Um, I don't know what other people do at their sipping paints, but we have a good time at ours. And so it's a piece of art that um, you can share. I mean, you, you can be proud of display and not only just um, art, but other small projects as well. Um, and again, we did our first um, party in my garage, in a hot garage on a summer day with family and friends. And we had a good time and we incorporate the skills that she has as far as uh, woodworking and, and then um, I do a lot of the designing as far as the stencils and things that we use um, for different projects and we kind of just merge the two together and been rocking it out and when we're not doing um, actual workshop classes we rent out the space for other people to enjoy for birthdays and um, celebrations baby showers small venue but um, it's been doing very well and we're we're glad to see it um, be looked at as not only just okay something that we can rent but we have repeat customers and people that just enjoy the atmosphere and what we bring what the time that they that they are there we feel like everybody that come through the door once you through the door you family and mm -hmm. we have and so we kind of just merged the two and we wanted to want to I think that's the important part is that we're doing it together you know oftentimes sorry oftentimes um we seem like, oh, women can't work together and it's going to be, you know, but head, head button. And I can say both of us are a little bit, you know, headstrong. So we do. 
I, I'm not going to say it's 100% no disagreements, but we worked through those things and um, it's been good for the both of us. So, and I think that the most important part is that it helped both of us grow. So. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. I think we get that same notion all the time that women can't work together when a lot of us, because of our innate ability to lead and be strong, right. makes us good business partners right. with one another. And we just have to be able to check our egos and check ourselves mm -hmm. at the door so that we can see that success with merging with other businesses. So Shanina, we have Wood on the Whim. That is the, for those who are listening, that is the um, Wood Creative Workshop. What is you haven't told us the name of your passion, your baby? What is the name of the event planning and wedding planning company? So it is SM Style Lounge. SM is for my initial Shanina Monique or Shanina Monique McCraig. My last name um, is with the M as well, uh, but SM Style Lounge. Um, and again, I've been officially an LLC for three years now um, and working on developing additional skills to bring to the table. Um, right now, my focus has been weddings and event production. So um, I am the event manager for the West Side Music Festival, which has been my biggest to date um, event that I've put together. And I've been on that contract for three years now. Of course, we didn't have it this year because of COVID. Um, but um, yeah, that has been a big accomplish, accomplishment for me for getting to the next level. Um, so again, remember that name, SM Style Lounge. Um, and basically, um, again, uh, like I said, I'm doing weddings, events, event production. Um, hopefully, I really do want to kind of stop um, the mid-range events, do small gatherings, intimate gatherings, and then big events, corporate events is really my goal. Okay. Shanina, for the people who are watching, because I have Facebook friends and people tuning in from all over, we are streaming guys on YouTube as well as Facebook each and every single week. I know that there's people commenting from all over. So for those who are not from Chicago and they don't know what the West Side Music Festival is, tell them. Tell them about your work. Tell us what is that? So the West Side Music Festival, um, actually, it is a free, let me tell you, free music festival with big headliners. Last year, our headliner was Faith Evans, um, all free, provided by the West Side Cultural Foundation, um, where the um, the president is Natasha Scott, um, and she brings, um, well, the West Side Cultural Foundation brings not only entertainment but help and resources to the community and this is just their big highlight event um, for each year and uh, basically it is a free event where other small business owners owners are also put on a platform um, where they can vend um, it is a small very small for the number of people that are there and the opportunity is a very small fee for um for vendors however the event itself is free to the community far and wide not just west side south side north side um some people say east side if it's the east side but <laughs> <laughs> you know they mean southeast southeast <laughs> So we've had faces like Faith Evans. What was the year before? Was did, did we have like 112 one year or something? 112, BBD, Angie Stone, um 702 was there last year. No, year before last, we've had ooh, a number of people. Okay. Uh, the Brat, Shot Towns on was there last year as well. So that was great to see her back in the city. That doesn't happen um, quite often. So it was great to see her as well. And um, I know you said you have people tuning in all over. So um, this is not just for Chicago. Come on in. We had people that was lined up uh, so early from different states around um, Illinois. So it's great. It's a great time. And then not only, like I said, small businesses are able to display um, their things um, as, as far as a vendor is concerned, but we also have local talent events. So all of our up and coming rappers and singers, um, dancers have an opportunity to submit um, their reels. And then we have a committee that kind of um, 
that uh, votes on who will be able to open up for those headliners. Like your name and then Faith Evans. Come on now. <laughs> okay, I definitely wanted you to brag a little bit about what's under that belt, right? Because you were you're I was, you're, I was right in Douglas Park on the west side of Chicago. Five thousand, seven thousand people out there. Come on, we, we're, it's a good time. Okay, okay. I wanted you to share that information so that people know who they're hearing from. This is as we dive into the topic. I want them to see like. This isn't like I started my business and yeah, I just run a business from my sofa and uh, not to take that away from anybody because, hey, it's what I do. But I run a business from my home where we're talking about having two different businesses that you're very involved in, um, that is very hands on and having to be very present and still working in corporate America. Shanina, tell me about that experience. Is it is that easy? Tell me what to tell me what that's like and how how are you? I'll reword that question and I'll say, how are you able to do it? So I will say now, let me just give a little color to this situation, because I know there is a lot of um, people that are looking to do that. You got one foot in, one foot out. Um, me, myself, I'm still in corporate. So, you know, I, I don't I want the viewers to know that, you know, I haven't made it out or not not to say that, like. I'm making it out the black hole or anything. Um, but I will say this for me, I don't have children and I know that that in itself is a big job. So anybody that is trying for a small, small business and corporate, we know that your biggest job is your children and your family. Um, I am married. I, I do have a family. I consider that family, you know, that's our family unit as of now. So, but I will say that it may be a little easier for me to juggle some of the things that I do because I don't have that added responsibility. However, you know, I am responsible to other people outside of my home um, as far as family is concerned, because I'm big on that and supporting them in the things that they do as well. So that eats time too. I would say, um, you know, I was thinking about that because I knew I was going to come on. And um, a lot of people say, you know, you give yourself just as much as time as you give your corporate job. And, you know, I battle with that. Like, is that realistic? You know, you telling people they got all of these other things that are outside of them. But I, then I came to the conclusion that it is realistic because it's not necessarily that you have to physically be doing something 24 hours a day, you know, but in order to build a business and be successful, that should be in your thoughts. That should be in your prayers. That should be, you know, a part of you daily thinking of things, challenging yourself, even in your heart, even in your head and in your heart. Um, is this really what I want to want to do? And so that is a part of building your business. So when I kind of check myself about, yeah, you do have to put in just as much as work as you give your nine to five. But that doesn't necessarily mean that it's all physical and, you know, on the grind. But it is also preparing your mental, preparing your heart to uh, pour into your passion. So that's what I've done. You know, I whether it's in my dreams, whether it's when I wake up jotting down um, ideas um, and basically setting, also setting aside some time to actually do the work. And that's what, you know, that's what I've tried to do. And that's what I continue to do and continue to try to perfect because it is a balancing act. You know, we all want that big payout. But we also have responsibility to the people, you know, our husbands, our our wives or our, you know, uh, family. So it's a balancing act. But um, I would say you have to stay focused. Um, I have I have had struggle with that also because, like you said, I am a creative. So your mind goes everywhere like, oh, I want to do this. Oh, I know I could do that. Oh, I, you know, you need to pin it down. <laughs> and, and grab your focus you know mm -hmm. we only got 24 hours in a day now let's be realistic and i think the other part is also getting the proper self-care and um rest that you need and i've struggled with that and 
you know, I actually just had this conversation with my partner, like, look, we gotta have to, you got to get some rest, you know, in order to be your best self. So those are some of the things that I try to practice. So, so what is a talk about that just a little bit, right? So Shanina is working full time. Do you work from home or do you travel to work? So what is, what is your day versus what your nights look like then? So um, right now I am working from home, but that hasn't always been everyone. A lot of people are working from home because of, you know, COVID. So I am working home, from home now. Um, but before then I was traveling quite a bit. <laughs> you know, I traveled 45 minutes to work and 45 minutes home, long nights at the office uh, for big, big meetings. Um, but taking every break to do a little bit of what I need to do for my business, Um you know, lunchtime, using it for my business. A little of their time, using it for my business. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it real, right? Let's talk about it. <laughs> Let's talk about it because, you know, some, they're still in some of my time, you know, all that over. They do. They the corporate do. Salary, you got to stay there for a long time. I'm getting my time back, <laughs> you know? So um, just knowing, you know, also, a part of my integrity is, you know, giving them the best that I have to give as well for my job. But I want to give that same thing to me. So um, morning, getting up, you know, you praying, you met you. I, I will say that I don't do enough of that. Getting in that zone, meditating. But, you know, before my day starts. But I do have a picture on my dresser when I first get up. Today is going to be a good day. Today is a good day. Not going to be. Today is a good day is what it says. And, you know, I do I, that. And, you know, I say, hey, today is going to be a good day. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. But, um, you know, just setting forth to say today is going to be a good day and that I'm going to conquer this day. Also, I'm not going to be a prisoner of time, you know. A lot of times we, oh, we got to, I got to do this before I'm 20. I got to do this before I'm 30. You know, I'm, no, I'm not going to be a prisoner of time. I'm going to do what I can, the best I can with what I have. Everything else is going to take care of itself. And that's what I've tried to do. So long nights now, yes, long nights where, um, because like I said, as far as wood on a whim, it, it, it has started to pick up a little bit rapidly you know this since covid because everybody wants something to do and we're taking safe safe measures having very small groups right now um our capacity is 45 but we're only letting 12 people in you know so and they all have to be masked and temperature checked but um people are looking for something to do so that has benefited us in a way and it's been a little rapid but um it, yeah, it is long nights. It it is going to take some sacrifice. Um, what motivates you to to push through those long nights and sacrifice? I think what motivates me is the people around me that are looking up to me. My sisters, my niece and my nephew. You know, I want to, I, like I said, I don't have children of my own. And I'm not sure if that's ahead of me or not. However, you know, I do what I do to let them know that they can do it. Mm -hmm. Desires may be that hard work and dedication. It will get you there. It, and your measure of success is your measure of success. So yeah, I might not be on a billboard today. That might not be my desire. And that's a lot with entrepreneurship. I, you know, a lot of people out here, if you ain't a boss, then you ain't doing nothing with your life, pretty much. They're telling people. And I'm like, wait, hold on. That might not be the desires of their heart. That may, everybody is not cut out for it, you know? So let's not put people down for the journey that they're on because, you know, let me just go to church a little bit. God is no respecter of person. And whatever, you know, their journey is, it may be their measure of success. So we have to, you know, shut that down um, because everybody is not Shanina. Everybody's not Sharonda. What, what kind of world would that be? Probably fabulous. But <laughs> <laughs> two fingers. I'm going to be honest with you. I think that if it was two of me, baby. <laughs> I get on my nerves sometimes and it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> so, so Shanina, tell me, you know, with the thoughts. 
<laughs> Tell me, um, do you believe, you know, we're being, you're starting to hear the same messages over and over, you know, especially with COVID and people, you know, we're hearing it's dangerous to just have one stream of income or for your financial freedom, you should start your own business. So tell me, you know, what are your thoughts about, do you think, you know, and, and I know that you just said to me, you know, it's not for everybody. And I mean, entrepreneurship comes along with some stuff that is not for everybody, but tell me, you know, in your opinion, do you think that small business is a must and why or why not? Hmm. Small business is not necessarily a must for everybody um, because some people just got it like that. I mean, some people, parents have, you know, funnel money or whatever into their lives. They don't have student debt or whatever. It's not necessary. Um, however, I do think that it is a good thing. And I definitely agree um, for some. I, I do agree about. Let me just put it like this. Multiple income, multiple streams of income, that's a go. You know, um, even if it is just investing. So, you know, I don't, I mean, I guess that is entrepreneurship, but um, I would say that even investing can be, if you don't have like a brick and mortar or a service that you provide, but, you know, having some type of investment, I do believe that we should have something else going on besides your nine to five. Um, and the other thing is save, save you something, <laughs> you know, save something for a rainy day. You know, if nothing else, if you're not trying to be an entrepreneur or, um, do anything else at least save something oh i don't make enough money to save. yes you do you need to save something for a rainy day you know and that's a part of you know getting out of corporate having you a fund where you know you can take that next step um making sure that you you have that uh launching pad or you have that save savings to the side so i think that that is definitely important okay well I think that you just you just switch gears on us when we first or you you transition for us to switch gears when you first came in and I wasn't gonna say anything about Shanina transitioning out of corporate America. You came out with it like eventually leaving corporate. Um, let's kind of look at, at some of those things. So Shanina, tell me, you know, what are your what are your short term goals and your long term goals as it relates to you know, being in corporate America and then also building, you know, this brand and building the businesses that you have. Okay. Um, hmm. So my goal is by 45, I'm out. That's my, that's, that's my goal. Now I'm not going to tell y'all how old I am now. No. Here's <laughs> hopefully, you know, I am, um, out completely. Um, however, you know, things change because family dynamics and things change. You know, I, like I said, you know, I am married, but no children. However, he has had some career changes. You know, we have to figure that thing out because baby, we need some health insurance. We need some dental insurance. We need, you know, so those are things that come along with those decisions, but that is my goal, which is what you asked, um, is to completely be, um, out, out really taking care or my business is maintaining the lifestyle that I choose, uh, within the next three to five years. So do you have Shanina, do you have a freedom number um, or is it, when I say freedom number, people call it different things, but do you have a number of the amount of money that you need to have saved in order to do it? Or is it just really associated with, you know, your age and progression of your business? What has had you set the tone for 45? Uh, is there a freedom number? Um, uh, you know, and now I think about that, I'm, well, I'm not going to say that, but, um, yes, a, a number, um, in my bank account. Yes. Um, that's part of it. Um, two is honestly getting, getting that message from God, like, Hey, that's over with now is your time. I got this set aside for you, you know, go towards that. 
Um, so that is really honestly um, a part of it as well, uh, because I have I've had this conversation and probably some of my family may be watching um, and have heard me say these things before. And it didn't necessarily pan out the way that, you know, I thought it would. But um, definitely security as far as um, a, a savings account, you know, a number in my account um, that I feel comfortable with. Uh, and then. Right now, I'm kind of getting a little spoiled because being at home, working from home, it's like, oh, I could do this. I could mm. do, this. do this, you know. So then you start thinking about, well, this might not be so bad. But um, that my my focus and my goal is still that. And yes, it is a based off of a number in my account as well as you know that unction and that the things that um, God tell me to do. Okay. Okay. You you said, you know, life happens and things happen. What what would you maybe say have been some shortfalls or some challenges that you've come across with, you know, being a multiple business owner as well as working corporate America? What are some things that you would do differently um, or some hard lessons you had to learn? Hmm. Well, I do believe that at one point in my life, I missed the opportunity to just do this for full time and do my own thing um, because I didn't move at a certain time. And uh, when I feel like I was told to walk in that direction and, you know, I, 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 I always say I'm a faith flexor and I, I feel short on that. You know what I'm saying? Just look. He's telling you to go ahead and do this thing, and then you fall back. And then in in that time, that window, because if I go out there, I know I got to make it happen. But then that's in that window, other things start transpiring. Transpiring, you know, my um, my husband had to take another um, job, and you know things like that. So then you you feel like okay, now I got to start over in securing, you know, home base first, and then. Um, and then pursue this. And then you get caught up. You get caught up in also the good things that come with corporate because there are some good things, you know, stability just alone, you know, and you know that you're going to get a paycheck in two weeks or in a week or whatever. And, and you know, so I think just just um, another shortfall I will say is relationships because it is a lot of sacrifice. And um, even with being a wife, you know, I felt like sometimes that I could have been there more or I could have did more, you know, for my husband and for our household. But I'm on the grind. It's late nights. I'm at Wood on a Whim three times on the weekend and the weekend is the only time we work. So how are you going to work all date night and all of that in, you know, so I do. But I, he had been transparent and said, look, this, you know, this ain't, we got to figure this out. And, and we did just that. And, you know, it's cool now. Um, but I do believe that that was a shortfall because you get this drive, like a lot of entrepreneurs, like this is my folks and this is, I got to get this done. I got to, you know, I can't fail. I cannot fail. And yes, you can. I mean, we see other people say fail quickly so you can get it together the next time, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of us take, um, we are a little bit too hard on ourselves and just continue, continue, continue and let other things around us fall apart. Um, I think that uh, part of me put my, um, not my, relationship with Christ and, you know, going to church and maintaining the things that, you know, I used to do for, for church and, you know, for the body of Christ, that I think that I definitely let that fall to the wayside, um, at one point because I was on the grind, you know, um, and that's very important to me. And so I had, I have to, I still have to work that thing out, you know, and balancing, balancing that. So I think that those are, to it, that I, <laughs> uh, and I'm okay. sure that more to come. However, um, I would say that they're all lessons, and we just have to work through that. And you know, 
pivot off of it, make the best of it. That's, know, we, that's it's like we got the figure. That's out. really good. That's, <laughs> that's that's really good. You know, um, I, it, it's all a balance, and it's it's all definitely sacrifice and. We sacrifice things a little bit differently, but you say I sacrifice this now to have, you know, right. this later because imagine when you're not giving your time to corporate and trying to do this and it looks it looks different. So don't beat yourself up too bad. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, I, I will say at some at one point I did, but I could like you said, I'm doing this now for later and whatever I do. You best believe it's for the glory of God, for sure. Because I'm like, he did this, you know. So uh -huh. those millions in the bank, he going to get his 10%. And, you know, I'm going to help others because that's what it's about for me. That's what it's about. And building uh, my business is, is for a legacy and, you know, to help others. And that's, that's, that's dope. That's dope. Um Shanina, I always like these things to, you know, you shared a lot of information about your journey. And I hope that our viewers out there are seeing like I'm starting a business and I'm struggling and it's not just you. I want to start a business and I can't do it because I work corporate America. Well, look, it's sitting. She's sitting right here in front of you, a walking, talking example that it, it can happen. But I always like to, to put this out there. Right. For the person who isn't the small business owner, for the person who is saying, you know, I want to work, you know, I want to start my own business, but I just don't know that I can. And I'm, I'm still working the corporate. What would you say to someone who said that to you? Yes, you can. <laughs> I mean, you, you definitely, you definitely can do it. The, the main thing is one, um, the why I would say that's your main thing. Start with the why. If you just want to do it because you saw your friend doing it, uh, yeah, my sister doing it around the corner, you know, I'm not saying to take that as motivation, but if your why is just because they doing it and, you know, just because what you think you can, you know, I, I, your why got to be deeper. Mm -hmm. Your why has to not be just surface stuff. If you start with that, you, you really... Start feeling it in your heart. This is my purpose or this is, you know, what I need to do because of my kids or that's going to motivate you, you know, to say, I'm not going to let anything come in my way, not even my nine to five in order to accomplish this. And then the other thing is get started, just get started, whether it's a pen on a paper for an idea. Like I said, part of that, give them, give yourself as much as you give them is those thoughts, you know, and, you know, really telling yourself, well, yes, I can. And, uh, and then, oh, I, well, well, why can't you? If you can't find a reason that you can't, a good reason that you can't, then you can, you know? So, and it, especially if you thought that you can do it and, 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 Everything is on the tip of our fingers now. So, you know, YouTube University. There you go. Start there. <laughs> you know, YouTube University. And I think that what's most important is that, um, which I am really looking, looking for right now, too, is mentorship and having a mentor and um, shadowing someone that is willing and open. And I think that after that you, you you some of that energy and some of that oomph gonna rub off on you anyway and you just go forth from there i think that last comment that that mentor uh people in the chat box everybody is like motivation passion definitely lighten up in the chat box but it is that motivation and that passion that that pushes us this is again is a subject that is extremely close to me so it's hard not to be like girl and i think but I had you here to share with us and you you just ended with two amazing, three amazing things. Motivate, passion, get mentorship. Get yes. mentorship 
is probably the biggest thing that we can do. Listen, Shanina, it is 745. I'm going to ask that you hang out, though, in the showroom. We're going to close out. I definitely want to be respectful of your time. This woman is doing all sorts of things. It's Sunday, and so I don't want to keep you any longer. We are definitely grateful to have you come and share your experience, you know, sharing with us that anything is possible. Like you said, if, if God is doing it for you, he can definitely do it for us, but you got to get up to do it to yes. make it happen. Yeah. So thank you so much for being a guest um, on our show tonight. Congratulations to you and all of your success. I am, like I said, when we open this, I'm extremely proud of you. And even when you think someone isn't looking, they are. Um, we're seeing everything you're doing and definitely believing in you. And I'm going to be honest, I'm surprised that it hasn't been that. Girl, I'm done with corporate. I am definitely <laughs> waiting for that moment any day. Like when I sent you the one message inviting you, I thought that was going to be like, I'm done. Right. But I totally get it. Thank you again. I'm going to go ahead and wrap the show. Hang out for me just a little bit. Guys, you heard it there and seen it there first. You know who I am. Your host, Sharonda McDaniel, where we're here each and every single week delivering a series and a podcast to you of sharing information on how you can um, take your life to the next level on whatever shortfalls or shortcomings may be there, right? We're talking from business ownership all the way down to getting your credit in order. But I'm going to tell you one thing that you've heard over and over and over through all of these lives. You've heard everyone tell you that multiple streams of income is a must. You don't have to be an entrepreneur or go start that business, but where are you putting in your money to invest in your future? I hope that as you, you uh, join me on these lives each week, you are empowered, inspired, and that you are building to be the best you that you can be. If you are that person that's out there that's sitting and saying, I want to start a business and I don't know where to go, there is a saying by Christina Agatha that says, the secret to getting ahead is simply to get started. We can all be very guilty of having an idea and we never implement it. We have an idea and we feel like we have to know so much and it hinders us from propelling forward into whatever it is that we want to know. We go start new jobs and we get training, right? They train us on how to do a great job for them. And so what you need to do is get started and get a mentor, right? Watch YouTube, do those things and train yourself, but stop being your own hindrance because as long as it remains that I want to do, I want to do, right? Faith without works is dead. We got to take the work and allow God to bless it. Again, I am very grateful to have you guys here. Grateful to have Shanina join us on tonight. You know where to find me. Each and every single week, I am here live on Sundays at 7 o'clock. We are already on episode 7. Time is definitely flying. This has been officially turned into a podcast, so you can go back and watch the replay on YouTube as well as listen to the uh, podcast on Spotify, as well as a few others, Pocket Cast. I can drop those for you on my Facebook. Again, you guys have a great night. God bless you all. Thank you for your support. You know where to find me on Facebook because you are here. I am on Instagram at empowered underscore with underscore Sharonda and YouTube Empowered with Sharonda. Join us on the conversation. Don't forget to like, share, and comment as we share this wealth of information with each other. You all stay blessed. Be safe. Have a great night.